Uh, we live. It's part two. We got Mickey Bay, Big Rich, Real Boxing Facts. We out here in Las Vegas. So tell me more about uh, the mob. Yeah, I was basically just making a reference, just 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 by saying that's who started boxing pretty much and how it was ran back in the day. It, I mean, it's still corrupt and it's just different. You know, it might not be the, the exact, like, it might not be the mob in the game, but it's still corruption. Right. Like, you know, but, um. So do you think promoters, they, they really, really take, take advantage of other fighters? I mean, I mean, it's still a business, so at the end of the day, my thing is, a lot of times to me, I think it's middlemen. Like, I don't really even think it'd be the promoters. Like, I, like, it's middlemen. Like, you know, you got a lot of middle men that's trying to eat, so they the, you, they the go between between the fighter. Like, my problem always in my career been the middle man. Like, it ain't really never been the promoter, even with Floyd. You know, everything was good when it was just him, me dealing with him. But you stick a middle man in there, just imagine this. Imagine if they ain't rich or imagine if they don't got that much money. What you think is going to happen? Right, when you got to right. go to the... Just say it's a million. I'm just making examples. Say it's a million dollars on the table. If you, if you got, if you don't have the right manager that you can trust, they talking to the promoter. They could come to you and say, "Oh, it's three hundred. So they can give you that, and then take out of that three hundred. And you know, you got to pay all the other stuff back. You got tax. But my thing is, you know. So, so in your opinion, um. What do you think a fighter with a, a championship belt should be getting paid? I mean, it all varies still, like, because boxing is weird to me. Like, a lot of times people get paid on favoritism. Like, you got guys that if the promoter like you, they might pay you a certain amount. It's weird, but it's weird how, how boxing is. Like, you know, some guys, they could fight Joe Blow and, and not even sell tickets, but get paid four or five times more than another fighter. Like me, like, I think every big fight I had, my opponents got at least four to five times more than me. Wow. And I never said nothing. I never complained. Don't, this is my first time even saying it. I'm talking about all my, the few big fights that I did have, my opponents got anywhere from four, three to four to five times more than me. I never complained. Even though I knew it wasn't right, I ain't complained, though. Because I learned, like, when I got with Floyd, I'm like, dang, you know. I feel like before I got with him, I think I, my mistake was probably being in a rush, but I really wasn't in a rush because you get in boxing to make money. You get tired of making them little paydays, fighting hard fights, but getting them little paydays. But um, I think come with Floyd, I'm, I'm going to just sit back and just let it go how it's going to go. I ain't going to question nothing. But when you do that, dudes get relaxed. They see that you relax, and then they say, oh, like, damn, they take advantage. So... You know, after three years, three, four years of that, I, you know, I'm like, damn, come on, like, we, like, come on, yes, I won the belt now, like, I'm, it got to go up a little bit. So, in terms of regulating boxing, do you think that, that promoters should have to be accountable for things like that, other than just the middleman, I mean, it should be, everything should be itemized. In my should situation, be yeah, but. Uh, the promoters, to me, they doing a good, pretty a good job right now. Like, if you look at Bob Aram, if you look at Eddie Hearn, and, and if you look at PBC, when you got the majority of fighters is happy, that's when you know it's, it's going good. Like, everybody can't be happy. Like, I mean, it's different strokes for different folks. Like, so I ain't going to just say one guy might, ha not, might not like being with Al, but they might go to Bob and have a great career. But it might be vice versa on the other hand. But as long as the fighter to me is making money, which all of them guys do, they ain't going to do nothing as petty as what happened to me. Like, if a dude can fight and he ain't never, he don't owe you money, never slept with your girl, did something bad, why would you put a man on the shelf just because the manager tell you to? If the manager say, oh, no, this dude, he's starting to ask questions now, man. You have to teach him a lesson. And, and that's basically... What my situation was, it wasn't nothing, but that was from me having a young manager. You know, that was his first, you know, his first time managing. We couldn't, I, I was willing to sit down at the table. It's like, man, after a while, when you know, 
when you know you getting fucked, like how long you gonna let it happen? Like I'm still boxing to help my family and you know, I, I ain't one of them dudes that you know how people say all that fake it till you make it. Nah, I, I got tired of that shit. Like ain't no point of being on something called the money team if I wasn't making no money like that. Like, you know, I ain't saying that Floyd did some great things for me, but what I'm saying is let me choose my own manager. Like I want it if I want this person to manage me, don't stick somebody in and make them manage me. And then I don't got no I don't never know when I'm fighting. I gotta find out in the media just like a fan. I wake up in the morning and here I gotta fight. So I was gonna ask you that. What what's your relationship with Floyd? Did I mean, you, it's kind of I mean, weird. You have a like, long, do you have a long history with Floyd? Oh, for sure. Yeah, I knew Floyd literally probably half of my life now. Yeah, since I was a teenager. Oh, wow. So y'all grew up together. Yeah, like, I moved out here because of him. But what's funny is, when I first moved out here, everybody said I was dumb. Oh, the Mayweathers ain't this. They can't train. Floyd ain't this. To see everybody mimic them and try to fight like them a decade later just kind of was funny to me. A lot of a lot of my friends in the, in the boxing world and trainers was like, oh, they was kind of like, dang, why y'all going to Vegas? Like, but see, I was always good at seeing the future a little bit, I guess you could say. Like my brother already had this. He he knew since Floyd was an amateur. Like man, he the he the best fighter in the world. I don't know how he knew. It was like a prophecy or something. Wow. Like, we got this on video. Like we got proof. Like. He told me this when Floyd was in the Olympics. That was around when I first started boxing. And he told me that he, he could be Mosey and Delahoya at the time. And we debating, because, you know, I, I was the Mosey and Delahoya guy at that time, like when they was professional. And he like, no, nah, man, this dude right here, because our first boxing trainer let us use a, a tape of, of the Olympics. And my brother was like, man, he the best fighter in the world. And he was like, man, if we turn pro, we need to train with his dad. At that time, I think we was, um, Emmanuel Stewart was sponsoring us. You know, he had opened right. us a gym, opened us up a gym in Cleveland. Um, we used to go back and forth from there to Detroit. You know, Detroit is like two hours away. But my brother just had that vision, like, man, his dad is the truth. Like, he a great trainer. Like, we need to go out there. And then some, one day we just met. You know, it's, it's going to be a documentary to it all, so y'all can see all the footage. But. So, so tell me this. What, what does people, like, misunderstand about you when they when they, when they they I mean, type your name up on Google and they want to know about you? What, what do they what do they just don't understand about you? Well, my thing is, is that you can't believe a headline that come out because anybody could type a headline and put it out. Like, that don't mean that that's just what it is. Like, you might see something come out, but you didn't see the effect. You didn't see the, the the details and this and that. So even and but I was always the kind of dude like, alright, forget it, I'm gonna take the back seat, I'll take the flag for that and just move on. But you know, I, I think maybe maybe my manager at the time did learn now. Like my thing was I think that we should have sat down with each other. I'm always open to forgive. Like who am I? Like shit. Ain't no human being perfect. I made mistakes. He made mistakes, but I feel like, um, like, I, I feel like some of the stuff he did, Floyd is the kind of guy that he pay and he deal on, on emotions. And by you being his cousin, you know how to trigger his emotions. So if you feel like you need to put me in check and slap me on the wrist, you know how to go to your cousin and what to do and what to say. Like, you know what to say. And he shouldn't have done that. If you making money off of me, you should have kept it how it was. Like, Floyd was the kind of dude, he the kind of dude that if he if he what you, he going to be what you. Like, he going to pay you and overpay you. And he the king of boxing. So, if, if he say, I want him I want him to have this or I want him to do that, it's going to happen. But if he say he don't, it's going to be the, it's gonna be bad for you. And, 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 and I just feel like Floyd beforehand pre before I had a manager Floyd Trey treated me great almost like a, a son he, he, even though even though you know he ain't old enough to be my dad but I'm saying like I can't take away all the good stuff that he did but what make Floyd in the great in the ring it kind of make him bad as a promoter and bad as a businessman because he's so much of a winner that if it's a dispute whether right or wrong he want to win he a winner in the ring, but in business, it's different. It's like Michael Jordan. He the greatest player ever, but how is he as a as an owner in the NBA? What right. you think? 
Right. So, so do you think that, you know, because to me, you know, when, when two men sit down and talk, you know what I'm saying, I think anything can be worked out. Yeah, but you know man, what, 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 I don't know. Like, you would think I suck with it. You would think I mess with one of his girls or stole some money or something. Like, I don't know. But my thing is, like, it was definitely unnecessary because we ain't got no personal problem, this and that. I shouldn't have got set on the shelf the long as I had. I ain't never trip or complain. Like, I made the, I made the least money out of every 10-round fighter at Mayweather promotion. Right. Like, everybody. Like, I ain't never complain. Ain't nobody never hear this. Like me come out and say this, I just took it on the chin. But at the end of the day, it was just the extra stuff to me. Like, you know, if you're gonna finally let me move on, just let me move on. You know, if dudes say they wanna sign me, you know, don't nobody gotta go and say, you know, just let them do what they wanna do. You don't gotta put a wrench in it. Like, right. So, so tell me this. So, and, and when we talked about the mob, do you think they, they kind of like caralize that as, as politics now? And yeah, I mean, cause. Yeah. That's like a word that you can use to make it acceptable. Yeah, it's more political. But, yeah. But see, most of the, like I said, the, the promoters is about money. Man, these dudes would promote Ted Bundy <laughs> if he was still alive. Like, come on, man. Like, as long as you can bring money to the table for them, they'd promote you. But a lot of the time, like I said, and I don't knock dudes hustles, but a lot of dudes that get in boxing, think about it. How many kids you hear in school grow up say and say, oh, I want to be a boxing manager when I grow up? Zero. Right. So think about why dudes get in the box. And it ain't, see, the thing is, is, you can't just jump into the NFL or NBA with no qualifications. Right. In boxing, you could just jump in off the streets and say, oh, I'm a uh, boxing manager. You could be, and, and most cats are, don't have no business experience that get in, which is fine. But what I'm saying is, like, if you get in, just know we putting our life on the line. We did this our whole life. So if you, if, if you jump in on this, understand that, like, like, even me, like, I must be kind of crazy. I've been training. You see how I just worked out. So right. Imagine training like that without having no date or nothing. Like, and I ain't made a boxing person three years. Right. And you've been, you've been in, you've been sparring the top people that's out there. Yeah, you seen. Yeah. I don't, and I ain't look rusty yeah, at yeah, all. Yeah, we ain't going to say no names, but you've been sparring all the top people out yeah, there. Yeah, exactly. So, that's my thing. But I feel like that's all I can do is do what I can control. Hopefully soon, this stuff is inching in there but like I say it ain't easy leaving Mayweather promotions and I had it the hardest though which is weird like you know at one point it would have been the best for me like I say but um I had it the hardest just just by having a, a, a manager that just came in I was you think about it man you come in you manage a fighter and he become a champion in less than a year you didn't have to invest zero dollars zero you have mm. to put up no money, but but you, and I and I ain't trip on that. Even though I didn't pick him as my manager, my thing is, is that after a few years when we did part ways, it, it should just be like, all right, it's all good or whatever, you know. And and, and I even offered him another, you know, position, chance to come back in. But like we got to sit down, talk this and that, right, and, and right. everything. Just because that's what kind of dude I am. But by me being so humble and all that stuff. And you sit back and you let somebody speak for you, people get misconstrued and think this and that. And and, and, and that's why you wanna hear me talking more and number one, I'm you know, my IQ on this boxing is you know, it's is 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 it's through the roof, but you know, I'm just ready to get back in there though, really. So what's your schedule like? What's what's when when are you getting back in there? I mean, well now I'm you know, I'm promoter free and all of that stuff, so we gonna see who we gonna work with, and uh, you know, pretty much go from there. Okay, real talk, real talk. Okay.